All right, I think we're going to get started here. And uh, people may still be trickling in, but let's not keep you guys waiting. It's already uh, almost 10 minutes, about 10 minutes past the hour. So uh, thanks for coming. I'm, yeah, I'm just going. <laughs> so thanks everyone for coming. I hope you're having a fun time here at Supercon, the second year. And uh, last year was a success. I, I did, uh, geez, I did a panel last year. Or did I do two? I don't remember. But uh, we had a great turnout last year. This year is even bigger by far. And uh, at the rate of, that it's going, I mean, this is going to be a really, really nice convention for this area. But uh, I'm glad to be back for the second year and, and very happy to uh, talk with you guys, interact with you guys. Anyone have any questions to start off with about anything? My name is Tom Green, by the way. And uh, what I do is comic books. That is my full-time job. I'm a full-time freelance comic book artist. This is my 20th year. And uh, for those of you who don't know what freelancing is, it's basically uh, I work for myself and I just take on projects from different publishers and companies, uh, commissions for people, whoever has a job for me, then uh, if I can fit in my schedule, I'll work on it. And usually we have deadlines <coughs> that we work with. and. Um, that's basically the gist of my job. It's, it's comic books. I broke in when I was 19 years old, uh, rather young, uh, 19 going on 20, and uh, I broke in as an inker for DC Comics. And what an inker does is that they uh, take a pencil drawing and then they just kind of ink it with ink. You know, uh, my, my favorite way to describe it is I, I take the pencil drawing and it, sometimes it's very tight, sometimes it's very loose from the penciler. And then I just redraw it in ink, but then I kind of refine the lines and the detail and basically make it ready for print. That's how I started off my career. Um, so I kind of built, I don't know, whatever name I have, whatever following I have, I built it from that. And then I kind of branched off into other areas of my career, such as you know, more drawing and some painting and coloring. And I even authored two books, put out a couple DVDs on drawing and art. So uh, that's basically my career in a gist. Most of my work has been DC Comics. So, you know, those are the characters like uh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Justice League, Joker, you know, and then he, very, uh, I've done very few Marvel Comics work, which is kind of funny because I grew up a Marvel Comics kid. You know, Spider-Man and X-Men were really my my guys, they were my books when I was growing up. Really loved those characters. I loved those stories. And uh, that's what I wanted to be. I mean, I knew that I had um, some drawing ability. I've been drawing since I was four years old. Three or four or something like that. But my very first drawing I remember doing was Spider-Man on a phone book, on the front cover of a phone book. Some of you guys might be too young to know what a phone book is these days. <laughs> we used to have phone books. Now we have the internet. But uh, yeah, so it wasn't until I was about 15 years old, uh, that's when I really realized I wanted to be a comic book artist. You know, I was a typical boy that went through the phases of wanting to be, I don't know, sports player, astronaut, whatever. But when I got old enough to realize that I had to do something when I turned into an adult, uh, I chose comic books. So uh, anyone here an artist? Okay, we have one artist in this. <laughs> okay, what about the rest of you? Just uh, comic book fans? Like to read comic books? Or did someone pay you to attend this? Make me look good. So, uh, oh, at, at any point in this panel, if you guys have any questions, just raise your hand. If I not happen to be looking up, just, uh, just yell. And uh, I'll look up and, and you'll get my attention. But uh, I don't really have a proper PowerPoint presentation or anything. I just hooked up my, my laptop and I'm just gonna show you some random random art. And I usually do this when I do any type of panels or if I go to schools and I do a guest speaking spot and they'll usually want to see the stuff that I'm working on. So this first folder I see is called Childhood and it is um, basically my art when I was young, before I broke in, and I'm kind of, uh, let's see. 
This is a baseball player. His name is Will Clark. If you guys are into like 80s and 90s baseball players from the San Francisco Giants. And I'm trying to read the date on there. What does it say? It says 1990. So 1990, I was 13 years old. And uh, so I was really hardcore into drawing. I went through phases of drawing cartoons to comic books to realistic portraits. I really wanted to learn how to do everything art-wise. And for a while, and I, I used to play baseball when I was a kid, and I really got into the sport. So, you know, I used to collect baseball cards as well. And there was a, a baseball card company called Upper Deck. Some of you may have heard of them. Now they branched out to more than baseball cards. And we'll, get, we'll go full circle, we'll go back to that later. But I used to collect their baseball cards and in their set, they would actually have like painted portraits of baseball players, like the best baseball players. And I was so enamored by that. I, I collected those more than the actual cards that have photographs because it's like it's combining my two favorite loves which is art and baseball so at that time when i was 13 i thought i want to draw for baseball card companies um, i don't think they do that anymore so that's how i started getting into that and let's see what we have. oh this is when i started experimenting with color so i believe this was when i was 14 years old did i date this one <laughs> I was 14 to 15 years old here. Yeah, 19. That's why I changed my signature. Look how fancy that signature is. And uh, this is a former Minnesota twin named Chuck Knobloch. And this was actually a commission from one of my uh, middle school teachers. So what did she pay me? I think she paid me $30 or $35 for it. So at the time, you know, I was like, oh, this is like so much money to me. And, it was one of my first experiences actually making money with my artwork. And that was a revelation. That really planted the seed in my head. And I thought, wow, people are paying me to draw for them, something that I already like to do. So that's kind of what started and all went downhill from there. And then I would actually do uh, commissions for my classmates. So then word started getting around when I was in you know, eighth grade. And People wanted me to draw their favorite baseball players. I charged them five, 10 bucks. So this $35 commission was the most at the time that I had gotten. But then, you know, that kind of sets a standard because I would always raise up my prices depending on, you know, who set the highest price was my new standard. So this was in color pencil. That's all I knew how to do in color. You know, I messed around with markers and some paints and I didn't like it. I liked the control I had with colored pencil at the time. Um, See, this was also eighth grade, I believe. This is Madonna, <laughs> just practicing my, my drawing women skills. And um, like I said, it just goes back to me liking to, uh, to draw portraits and more realistic back when I was around 14. This had to have been when I was 14 because that's when I had a huge crush on Madonna back then. Uh, more baseball stuff. Jeez, how many, how many of these do I have? This is Kirby Puckett. And uh, same, I think this was actually commissioned by the same teacher. Yeah, it was. That's why I had a similar style. Um, high school or middle school yearbook cover. <laughs> Here's the funny thing about that. That eagle that I drew, I actually like ripped that off from a t-shirt I saw. It was from like a Winston cigarettes t-shirt that my dad had. I thought that was really cool, so I'm just going to copy that. I never told anyone at the time. But look how, look how bad that is. Not, not the copy job necessarily, but look at the background. Look at the clouds and the mountains. <laughs> I was like 14 when I did that. Anyway, uh, this was, I must have been, I think, 12 when I did this Ninja Turtle. At least that's what I was told. And I don't even remember this. This is what's great about social media and Facebook, because I get to reconnect with my former classmates. And I guess I drew some pictures for them, and they saved it. So then when they reconnected with me as an adult, and they found out what I did, um, God bless them, they, they sent me some stuff, like pictures that I had drawn. You know, and I'm really thankful for that, because most of the stuff before 12 years old, it's totally gone. It's been thrown away. So I don't have those anymore. So I, I just have these to go by. But again, it's just an illustration of, uh, of my, my evolution as an artist. So then now we can just like do a, a direct skip to <laughs> some of the stuff that I've been doing 
in my professional career. Um, this is a bunch of cards, and I've been working, and now going back to Upper Deck, you know, when I used to collect them when they were strictly a sports card company. Now they've branched out into entertainment and merchandising and licensing, and uh, one of the things they're famous for is a series of games called Legendary, which is a deck building game. Don't ask me what a deck building game is, because I honestly don't know, I've never played it. But they just hired me to do the artwork. But they put out a bunch of Marvel stuff. Um, this is for, I believe it's called, uh, is this Civil War? No, this isn't Civil War, this is something else. I did this a couple summers ago. And what they'll do is they'll just actually say, Tom, are you available? And this is how freelance works. A company will call me or email me and say, we have this project that we're coming out with. Are you available? Are you interested? And how many can you do? And of course, you know, this is a comic book related property. I love Marvel. I love their characters. I don't, uh, I don't work enough on them. And I said, absolutely. What characters you got? And then they'll send me a list of characters to draw. They'll send me a description of what they want on each card. Each card has its own ability or power, I guess. And I just, uh, I just draw it and I send it in and then they come out as a set. Now, uh, speaking of Legendary, there's a set coming out next month called Legendary X-Men. And I did 13 cards for that. And I did it actually while I was in Vietnam over the winter. So I took a long winter vacation over in Vietnam. I have uh, relatives there. And uh, because of the power of technology, I was able to bring my Surface Pro 2. And it's one of these uh, tablet computers that I can draw on. And I was able to do a bunch of work over there. And just literally email them the work. So uh, back, back in the day when I broke in, you know, we'd have to do it all on paper and then uh, send it to the companies and then they'd have to scan it in. We'd lose a day because of shipping on FedEx, but now it's, everything is so instant, it's great. So, um, so can you guys recognize who these characters are? Any of you guys fans? Go. Oh man. Yep. Not just Wolverine, but yeah, in the hall. Old Man Logan. Oh, and then um, yep. Star Space Star Lord. That's right, Star Lord. I, I know the guy on the bottom right, but I forgot what the name is. And I know he's like series more and X Men. Oh, he's a Sentinel. The the very bottom right. Kitty Pride. Yeah. Yep, the Sentinel robot. Yep, we got Kitty Pride. That's actually not the Hulk. That is Bo Banner. So he's, he's what is he, like the, the nephew or? One of the grand kids. Okay, some, some relative of some sort. Got Old Man Logan. Uh, we got Old Man Hawkeye up there in the Jeep. Captain America, Bucky, that's pretty obvious. We got uh, Age of Apocalypse version of Colossus back there. Or up, up there uh, in the upper right. Is that Lady Loki? Uh, Lady Loki? No. Oh. That's just a uh, very feminine looking Loki, I guess. <laughs> With the pose. <laughs> it could be. <coughs> oh, that's funny. We have uh, Dr. Sinister and Mysterio and Red Skull. So it's funny, you know, this. I, I don't do a lot of work for Marvel at all. I mean, some of the pages I think for Marvel are uh, from uh, Captain Marvel and uh, one issue of X Men Unlimited. And that's that. Uh, so this Upper Deck Legendary series is really a great way for me to, um, it's really a great way for me to work on the Marvel characters, even though I'm not like, on the books. It still counts as my personal credit. Um, you know, one of the, my favorite issues I worked on, Superman the Man of Steel, with the uh, writer Mark Schultz and penciler Doug Mankey. And uh, that was a good run. I know that was about a two-year run from 1990, ah, uh, maybe 99, no, 2000 to 2002, I was on that book. So, and that was the second major book that I was on. So for a really lucky young kid like me to go from a book like Major Bummer, which is my first book. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Major Bummer. You have, there you go. That was my first job when I broke in DC Comics. They weren't gonna throw a big name character to some young punk kid that just broke in. So I had to bust my chops and prove myself on a, a book called Major Bummer, which lasted 15 issues before it got canceled. And then um, I think I did a little bit of Starman, just like a small story, eight pages, and then I jumped on to Superman, the Man of Steel. So, and then after that, it was Justice League and Batman and Green Lantern, and like I said, it's all downhill from there. 
but um, really fortunate to have these, these credits. Um, this was just a, I believe it's just a commission or something, you know, in my spare time I, I do those, like I said, I'll turn them into prints oftentimes. Uh, here's another one, I think um, I drew this on this tablet computer right here, the Surface Pro 2. And I think I did this while I was on a Skype call, believe it or not. But Wolverine and uh, Wolverine and Batman are two of those like safe characters that uh, you can say my favorite character is Wolverine or Batman, and no one can really make fun of me for it. Oh, this is the pencil. This is the pencil version before I ink it of uh, Captain America and Bucky. And what they told me was, you know, kind of draw them back to back and, and uh, kind of tough looking. Um, if you look at the, let's go back to the finished version, the colored version, you can see a little bit of a difference. Um, you know, a lot of it is covered up. So, you know, a lot of it gets hidden with the text and the graphics. But it's kind of cool to see the difference between that, which goes to print, and then the, the pencil version. And sometimes I'll pencil a little looser, sometimes I'll pencil tight. It just really depends. And this is one of my first uh, uh, Marvel Legendary cards that I did. Probably one of my favorites, and that's why I, uh, I turned that into a print. Got uh, the big guns of Marvel right there. And I mentioned before that I had a run on uh, Justice League of America. And uh, my credit, my uh, name's down, the credit's right there. So again, really fortunate. I mean, it's like a dream come true for someone who's an artist who loves comic books to work on some of the big names of DC Comics, the biggest names of DC Comics. Uh, just, this is uh, a painting that I did. This is actually an original painting that's not done on computer. Uh, back, he's a little over a decade ago, I really got into painting with the airbrush and watercolor and working with uh, real models. Um, I guess that never really left me since I was a kid. I always like to experiment in different styles as you saw with the baseball players. And even in my professional career, I like to branch out a little bit outside of comic books and do just, just a different style. And this one was almost like a hyper-realistic style. Um, I would draw it in pencil first and it would be about, I don't know, 15 by 20 inches. And then I would uh, kind of lay in the black parts with the ink, the black background and the hair, and a little bit on the uh, wristbands. And then I would go in and uh, if you guys don't know what an airbrush is, it's just like a little spray paint gun. And you can load different colors in there. You just kind of spray around and, and just uh, create a very nice fade, something that you can't really get with like brushes and pencils, at least not too easily. Oh, speaking of Major Bummer, do you recognize this, this issue? <laughs> this is what, issue seven? Yep, issue seven. Um, I didn't work on the covers on this one. I worked on all the interiors, but I didn't work on the covers. I think they didn't want to take a chance on uh, someone like me, like a rookie, working on the covers, so they hired someone else. I um, mean, they kept the pencil, but they hired a different inker. So they saved the, the, the crappy inks for the inside, and they actually hired like a real seasoned pro for the, for the outside. That's fine, I mean, I understand. That's how it works. Um, and this is my first page I've ever worked on. So those are good times. And there's my name in the bottom right. And this was back in the day. If you saw the original page, those credits, and the, the fine print down there, that was actually stuck on the page. And all the word balloons, that's directly on the page these days, or back, back in the day. These days, it's all done on computer. So if you were to get original art these days from a comic book, all you would just get is the drawing. No words, nothing. And that's what I really miss about the old days of comic books, especially if you're a collector. Because at least for me, when you collect a page from, from back in the 90s and, and previous years, it really felt complete with the word balloons and all the headers and the titles and everything. It felt like a real complete comic book page. And nowadays, I don't get the same feeling. Oh, are we back? Yep, we're back to that. Let's see if I have anything else. Anyone have any questions? Anything? Oh, we got two. 
You first. Can you do that with layers? Uh, you were talking about, you know, you, you back, like Photoshop type programs and all that, you got layers. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can release it, just the, the bare, and then also release the layered version that has all the, the right overs. Right, right. It just, you know, it's a click away of switching. Right. So yours is more of a statement to not question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Commentary. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. But yeah, he's right. I mean, you know, with Photoshop and digital these days, you have layers to work on. You know, much the same way like physical layers, except these are imaginary digital layers. You have you draw on a layer and you can put stuff on top of it. You know, uh, like a second sheet of paper on top, and that can be just the letters only. Or you can have a layer that's just pencil drawing and another layer floating on top of just the ink drawing. And you can turn each layer on and off, or you can blend them together. So digital, in, in a lot of ways, has afforded us so much convenience. And we're so spoiled these days. But like I said, at the end, you kind of miss the, the charm of the, of the actual traditional line work on a physical page. And the collector's market for art now, it's, it's, it's really huge. And, and they really miss that. That uh, you know, sometimes I'll go to shows and I'll be like, "Do you have this page to sell?" And I'll be like, "Nope, sorry, that was digital." So I missed out on a sale there. There's a question back there. Yeah. Yes, you freelance both Marvel and DC comics. Yes. Which company was the better coming for you to work with? Do you think? What gave you more creative control? Okay, so the the question was, I work with both Marvel and DC. Which company was better to work with, and who gave you more control? Um, I'd say DC Comics is by far better. I think they, they pay more than Marvel pays me. And they give me more work. <laughs> so, um, so I'm gonna go with DC, because they're, they're the ones that, that uh, make me pay my bills. And, uh, but uh, you know, as far as Upper Deck, so the Upper Deck is not Marvel or DC, but they do a lot of Marvel games. They have to do the licensing through Marvel. So that's where I get to draw these characters. They give me a lot of creative freedom. Um, you know, they just tell me what to draw, but I can kind of play around with it a little bit. Right? The most creative freedom is working on my own comic book, of course, because I don't have anyone telling me how to draw or what to draw. So uh, I'm working on a comic book right now called The Switch. It's a 90-page graphic novel. That'll be out this fall. So uh, that'll be put out through Dynamite Comics. And uh, they put out a bunch of books. If you guys go to the bookstore, so uh, I'm, I'm trying to wrap that up here in the next month, finally, so that that can be out in the stores for you guys. There's another question? Yes? Which one would you pref do you prefer over or feel more satisfied with? Digital art or hand-drawn? I'd feel more satisfied with hand-drawn, definitely. That's what I grew up with. That's what I like. That's what I like to hold in my hand when I someone else's original art and just kind of see how they make the lines and the brush strokes. Yeah, with, with digital, it's... It's very convenient. You know, I don't have to scan, I don't have to erase, and uh, I can just email it. And if I make a mistake, it's so easy to just go back a couple steps. And with traditional art now, it's almost like an extreme sport. You have to be careful not to make mistakes. And if you do, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt to fix it. So, uh, but I, I, if, I think traditional is cooler by far. You know, digital art is just more of a means to it's just work, it's just business. That's just how the business works. So, good question though. Anyone else have anything? I'm gonna show a couple more things. Um, Ruby Summers, this is stuff that I did, I think, last year, two years ago. And this is uh, more Marvel Legendary stuff. And uh, what set is this from? Jeez, I don't know what set this is from. I've done so much, so much legendary stuff. I, I can't even keep track of the sets. Uh, this is uh, Cyclops, Scott Summers, I think daughter, right? I, I don't really, well, can someone confirm with me? Ruby Summers is Scott Summers and uh, Emma. Emma Frost, that's right. It's their daughter, right? So she's a lot of fun to draw. And this is her with uh, whatever those characters are. I probably shouldn't even say that publicly. I'll get lynched. And here's her. This is a cool one. I, I had a lot of fun drawing this one. Just kind of using her weird ruby eye type cyclops power to 
shoot that maestro guy. Maestro, that's a guy's name, right? Yep. Maestro. <laughs> and he was just a basic shot of him looking up, and on cue. And you know, sometimes when I send them these versions, they'll send me some notes back saying, well, can you uh, make her hair like this? We need to have her, like, her eyes like this. Her, uh, I think when I sent them this, they told me to have her have that power kind of glowing around her eyes, those black dots that you saw, like right there. So they'll, they'll ask me to do major changes, and that's good for a digital. Because digital, it's so easy to make changes or adjustments. If this was on paper, that'd be kind of a pain because I'd have to get the ink out, or sometimes I have to take the white out or the white paint, and then like uh, redraw stuff after I correct it. And uh, don't worry, I'll be able to do some demos too here for you in a, in a bit. And what else? Ah, this is something that I did at a at a middle school. I'll show you these. And uh, what I would do sometimes is schools will kind of hire me to come be a guest speaker to their classes, maybe just as a nice uh, break or presentation to their kids or whatever. And, you know, just much like this, just talk about comic books and I'll do some demos really quick. Sometimes I'll kind of yell out names and stuff. Yes, question. Were you mostly self-taught or did you went to art school? So the question is, was I mostly self-taught or did I go to art school? I was self-taught. Um, I, I didn't take any art classes other than what was required growing up in school. So I didn't take any art classes. How did I practice? Yeah. I just kept drawing. I just copied, you know, when I was young, I copied comic books a lot. I just find my favorite ones and just try to copy the lines. As I got older, I just kind of looked at magazines and pictures of people. You know, I always tell people to this day, I've been saying this since day one is if you're an artist and you really want to get better at drawing, for instance, people, superheroes, like comic book stuff, you buy one muscle magazine and you buy one like swimsuit magazine or like a Victoria's Secret catalog or something. I'll pull that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they ripped off my advice. That's my advice. Just, just buy one of each. And then I would say every day you just pick one picture from each book or magazine. Doesn't matter what page, just find one of each. And just start sketching it. Don't try to make it perfect. Just really try to see the shapes, you know, in the musculature of the body. Try to see the angles of the arms, you know. And uh, pick one male and one female. And it's not a lot to ask. Maybe spend a half hour at the most. You know, maybe if you're really into it, yeah, you can spend more time, like an hour or so. But if you do two drawings a day, then you do like in. in if you keep it up as a habit, 365 days a year, I mean, that's, that's what, 740 drawings in a year? Did you do my math right? I'm Asian, I should. 740 <laughs> drawings, right? Yeah. Right, 740 drawings a year. So, you're 740 drawings better than you were one year ago, if you put it that way. So, uh, that's how I practice. So, Oh, you know, I, I started on a tablet late in my life, very late in my life. Um, I started drawing on a tablet in 2014 when I bought this thing. This is still the same one, Surface Pro 2. They have a 4 out now, but I'm still on a 2. And, and for the main reason that this is the last version that has the Wacom uh, pressure sensitivity technology built in. If you guys are familiar with digital art, Wacom makes a series of tablets for, you know, to draw on. And they are considered the gold standard as far as really accurate pen uh, sensitivity and you know really mimicking the really fine lines and strokes uh, of drawing on paper. So that's why I kept this. It does what I need. The new ones with their new technology that they have adopted, the N-Trig technology or whatever it is, I don't like it. I mean, I'm very blunt about that. I played with it and I just don't like it. It doesn't have the same feel as a Wacom. So I don't know why. I'm not really sure why they ditched it. Maybe they just didn't renew a contract or something like that, or they just wanted. Hmm? Are they still selling the kind they have now? The well, you probably find either refurbished or used now, because this is like you know a couple of generations old now. But I still recommend it. Best bang for your buck, because when I bought this, it was about fourteen hundred dollars, brand new, 
Now you could buy it for probably 600 <laughs> used. Fully loaded. So I highly recommend it. And, and, and I do my professional work on this too. You know, I mean, I'll be working in my hotel this weekend with this thing. So, um, the reason I ask is like, I just do it on paper. So that's fine. Do like digital. Sure, sure. Me, it doesn't feel the same. Okay, I'll tell you really quickly how I got into this digital thing. I jumped in both feet first. What it was, was I bought this in 2014, and my dad and I, my dad, if it's a local area or close in this region, my dad likes to go with me to uh, conventions because he's retired and he doesn't do much at home, so it's kind of like fun for him to get out. Um, we went to Fargo, North Dakota for a show in October 2014, I remember this pretty clearly, and he was gonna drive, so I was in the passenger seat and I was working on Catwoman at the time. I had a deadline. And we had a four hour drive from Minneapolis to Fargo. And for four hours, I didn't have anything to do. So I whipped out my, this computer in the passenger seat while we were driving, and I just started in the car. And, and I just started pulling out one of the Catwoman pages for fun, and I just started trying to ink with it in the program that I'll show you in a, in a moment. It's called Clip Studio Paint, otherwise known as Manga Studio 5. Don't ask me why they have two different names for the same program, but they do. And uh, I, I got hooked from that car ride from Minneapolis to Fargo. I saw the potential, I'm like, wow, I could ink anywhere I want. I don't have to be confined to my table at home, drawing on paper. I can do this and be productive on the road. I can work in my hotel room. I, can, I was working in the car, for Pete's sake, you know? So uh, that's, that's what started. And then I just never stopped. So I kind of jumped in both feet first. And like I said, this was only three years ago. Very late. Before then, I had a little bit of Photoshop skills, but it was just mostly for minor stuff and corrections. Nothing as far as doing full-blown work. And since then, I've done work for television. Um, you know the, you guys know the TV show Big Brother for CBS? The reality show they have every year? No? No one's heard of it? Oh, you've heard of it. OK, a couple of you have heard of it. Every summer, they do a season called Big Brother. And it's just you know a reality show, oh, and uh, yeah, exactly, oh. yeah, yeah. So I've worked on them. In fact, they, in fact, for three seasons, they had a superhero episode. I've drawn the cast members, and they show it on TV. But that's all on this. It's all digital. And when you're working with big, you know, networks like television, you have to work digital now. As much as I love to work on traditional, the reason is because they go through so many meetings and changes. And it's just so much more flexible and easier. Like remember what I said, when you work on different layers on top of each other, then it's easy to kind of just zone in on one layer that needs a change rather than messing up the entire drawing. So yeah, that's how I, but let's zoom in on this a little bit. I thought we, uh, sorry, we uh, kind of got off track there, but that, that's a good question. Um, you know, I'll just do like, Simple sketches and requests, and usually they're just of the household names that you hear of. Um, you know, these are middle school kids we're talking about, so I kind of have to entertain them for an hour <laughs> when I do these things. And you know, we have like the Flash and Thor and all that stuff. And then um, this was a different class altogether. Who's excited about the uh, Wonder Woman movie coming out? Anyone going to see that next month? That's next month, right? That's gonna be awesome, I can't wait to see that. I haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2 yet. I haven't seen one, to be honest. I kind of, kind of embarrassed to admit that. I'll catch up one of these days. Any other questions? I'm gonna adjust my camera here really quick. I'm gonna reset it, and then I can start doing some demos for you. I'll just start doodling, um, and if you guys have any questions about the doodling, or if you want me to try to draw something in particular, um, I'm more than happy to do that too. This thing that one. All right. So I'm going to open up a program called uh, Clip Studio Paint. Um, that's what I like to draw with the most. I think it's. I, I get a little bit more fluid lines. I have Photoshop, and you can draw in Photoshop too. I've done that, but I prefer Clip Studio Paint. Clip Studio Paint to me seems to be made for comic books. I mean, it literally is made for <laughs> drawing comic books and like manga and stuff and anime. And Photoshop is a very specialized 
very uh, complicated software that's probably more suited for photo retouching and stuff like that. But it's, it's certainly powerful. It's almost too powerful for comic books. But this Clip Studio Paint is really awesome. And it's, you know, when Photoshop used to be a standalone program where you had to pay like five or six hundred dollars for it, but now they do like uh, subscription only. So it's like 10 or 15 dollars a month for Photoshop. But that's like forever. So that adds up. Clip Studio Paint, when I bought it, it was $50 on sale. Now that is an amazing deal for a piece of software that can do really 90% of what Photoshop can do. And most of Photoshop users don't really use all of its capabilities anyway. So um, I use this to do my black and white art, although I still do my coloring in Photoshop. The reason is because I'm used to that. So I never really learned how to color with this program, although it probably would be hard. But uh, here is my layers right here. You have with the paper, the blank white paper, and then you have layer one. And what that is, is it's literally a floating, just think of it as a floating piece of paper above the white. And you can draw on it. And um, here you have all of your tools. And you have markers, you have an eraser here, you have a pencil tool, you have pens. You have a paint bucket if you want to dump a large area of, of color onto one spot. But um, for now, I'm going to use the pencil tool. And it's really cool because the harder I press, the darker and thicker the line is, just like a real pencil. And you can even adjust this. But like I said, the reason why I love the Surface Pro 2 is the last generation that has the Wacom uh, digitized pressure sensitivity. So sensitivity is really good. It's, it's, I believe it's uh, 10,012 or 10,020 pressure uh, levels of pressure sensitivity, which is insane. I mean, they, they have, they've come out with stuff that's like, I think like 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, but I don't know if practically you can feel the difference. Um, if I use a pen tool here, then I can make the really nice dark pen lines and uh, it will adjust depending on how hard you press. So, um, anyone have any requests on what they'd like to see me draw? Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. The only version of Martian Manhunter I know how to draw is the one that I worked on in JLA, which was back in 2002 to 2005, which I don't, I don't even know if they've updated the look now, what he looks like. If, he's, if, if you're expecting me to draw a Martian Manhunter from the cartoon, I probably will not get it right. But I'll draw the Martian Manhunter that, that I used to draw when I was with um, JLA on DC Comics. So what I'll do is I'll sketch out, I'll, do, uh, I'll work digital the same way that I'll work on traditional, which is, I sketch out the drawing in pencil, and I start off really sloppy. I sketch really sloppy, and the reason is because if I need to change it, it's easily erasable. But also, if I was to ink this thing, then I can just put a brand new layer, a floating layer on top of the pencil, and just do my inks on there. And why do I do that? It's because when I'm done inking, I can take the pencil layer underneath and just delete the entire thing. That, to me, beats erasing any time of the day. Is this showing up? Oh, yeah. Good. Depending on the projector and the, uh, the screen, sometimes I have to press really hard for it to show up, or sometimes the contrast isn't quite right. He's got his little like cape collar thing here. See, I kind of messed up, so I'm gonna take off the eraser and erase it just like you would on a regular piece of paper.
And as I get uh, farther along, I'll tighten it a little more. But when I'm um, starting off the drawing, it's very messy. And the reason why is because all I'm trying to do at that point is I'm just trying to really feel out the shapes and the proportions just to make sure that you know, it looks right. See, like I'm still kind of messing with the proportion of his head, so I have to erase it. Draw it. Do we have mostly Marvel fans or DC fans here? So, DC? What about the rest of you guys? Dark Horse, Image, Fantagraphics? draw for me? Well, I practiced so many times in my life that I, I think, I think and I hope that I'm competent enough to draw it now out of my head, but you know what, what always, what always has been hard for me to learn was like the feet, because nobody draws feet. Nobody wants to draw feet, right? That's why you draw, you draw shoes to cover them up, boots to cover them up, but you never really, you never really draw the toes. Right? Because people are superheroes are always wearing boots, so uh, you know when I actually, when I actually had to learn how to draw feet, that really messed me up. It was hard enough for me to learn how to draw hands. Hands are pretty hard, but I I never I never had the same struggle drawing hands that I did drawing feet. And then uh, also I guess when I was learning just the lower body, just the legs, you know, because. Um, you know, I was one of those kids where I drew like superheroes. I drew them from the head down, and then once I got past the waist, I just kind of faded out. Didn't really care about the legs. You know? and also the back. <clears throat> the back muscles are totally different from the front muscles. So uh, that that took me a while to learn. But um, see, uh, most people say that the hands are a struggle, but that you, but you. And every artist who's struggling to draw hands should have no excuse because you have them here 24 7 as your reference to pose. And if you can't turn at a right angle, do it in the mirror or you got your phone, take a picture and look at your phone. And that's the best, that's the best thing is just, just keep using reference. There's no shame in using reference. We all do it. You know, you use reference because you don't know how to draw something. And the more you use reference, the more it becomes a part of your memory. And then you don't have to use it anymore. You know, that just goes the same with anything you know, that, that I'm drawing. I mean I, had to, you know, I mean, I had to learn how to use reference to draw every part of the body growing up. But the difference was I was more interested in drawing the showy body parts, you know, like you know, the, the abs and the face and everything, and really ignored the things that were really hard just because just didn't feel like drawing it because it was too hard to draw, so I just kind of slacked off on it. It wasn't until I was a little older that I realized that I kind of have to learn how to draw everything. So That's my advice. Think of each finger as cylinders. It's easier to draw cylinders in your head. Break those cylinders into three parts. That's each joint of your finger right there. So, and then when you get the cylinders down in, in the directions you want, then you can kind of lightly draw the, the skin, the flesh, over the cylinders. And the, the base of your hand is like a, it's like a flat block. So you know, don't, don't overthink you know, complicated shapes. Break it down. That's what I do with feet, too. Break the feet down into like a triangle wedge, like a wedge of cheese. You know? and just put little toes on the, on the end. Uh -huh. that's, all, that's all it is. is a drawing, a good drawing is just nothing but um, someone who's had a lot of practice and is really good at seeing shapes.
and then putting the shapes together like a puzzle and connecting them. Oh yeah, I do. And then I'll just go to sleep or I'll just watch TV or something until it goes away. I don't I don't worry about artists block too much anymore. It's not worth getting all worked up over. Anyone else have any uh, questions or requests? I could probably do one more drawing after this. Yeah, about 10 minutes. Okay. So what else do you guys want to see me draw? Gerb. Who? Gerb? Yeah. Who's Gerb? I'm, I'm so out of the loop, I don't know anything. Huh? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. You said you have a new comic book, not the Switch. Yeah, it's called the Switch. And uh, long story short, it's uh, basically a story of a of a, a gal, like a female super villain, probably one of the wor worst villains ever, part of one of the worst gangs ever, horrible crimes, and uh, you know how kind of in your life. You kind of go through phases where you don't really hang out with the same people anymore. You kind of move from circle of friends to circle of friends as you get older. Well, she decides that she doesn't want to be a supervillain anymore. She's sick of the supervillain life. She's sick of all these killings and stealing and all that stuff. And she wants to leave the game. Is she like a nine-year-old Oh, depends on what you mean by anti-hero. But basically, she wants to leave the game and do good, actually become a superhero, not necessarily an anti-hero. But she can't do that openly because there's two consequences. One, everyone's gonna know who she is and she's gonna have to, um, she's gonna have to pay the consequences for her crimes. And two, if you try to become good and leave the gang that you're a part of, they'll try to kill you. You know, just like most sensible gangs, right? You know, I don't want you to leave them. You shouldn't. What is it? Can I draw her? Yeah, I could draw her. Um, and her powers are like electricity too. So when she becomes a superhero, she, you know, her powers don't change, so she still has to use that electric uh, electricity. But she does it under a disguise. So that's that's the story of the switch. Oh, thank you. I hope I hope people will find it interesting. And this is where I do the tightening up. See, I use the uh, the rough lines that I put in, and and I just kind of pick and choose what looks right to me, and then I will start tightening it up to make it clean. Then, if I wanted to ink this, I mean, it'll be even tighter. You know, and it looks like I'm doing this really fast, but you know, I've, I've drawn this head angle so many times that uh, it becomes second nature in some ways. A lot of the lines actually become habit. How many of you guys are here all weekend? A few of you? Okay. And the rest of you are just today, obviously. No surprise, it's Mother's Day weekend, which I keep forgetting. Worst son ever. And we have this rope thingy that holds his cape together, kind of like a clasp. So that's my Martian Manhunter, roughly. It's been so long since I've drawn the guy. Okay, so then the next one we'll draw is uh, the Switch. And her name is actually uh, Electricia. 